Hi, welcome to the Digital Mapmakers Academy. I'm Paul Postal, and this is part three of a series where we're taking an in-depth look at the Dungeon Alchemist fantasy mapmaking application. And I did so with Dag Nabbit, one of the moderators of the Dungeon Alchemist Discord. I don't want to waste any time. Let's get right into it. We can wrap up this series. There we go. And then let's say that this tavern now is on a... Uh... Well, let's say it's in the woods. Okay. Okay. Or it's all, it's along a road. <clears throat> okay. So maybe what we'll do now is you can I'm going to set up these tot these um everything is done with rooms. Right. So this might be a little confusing to people, but okay, let's show Dungeon it. Alchemist works in rooms. So even though I'm going to set up something outside, I'm still going to create a room for it. Okay. Just bear with me. Sure. So we're going to do this and this, I'm going to turn the AI off because I'm going to make changes to everything. Okay. And um, this might help a little bit. I'll turn it into a park for instance. Okay. So AI is off. And now we've got some nice grass. I'm going to take the wall away. And once you get into um, wall removal mode, mm -hmm. you can just slide your, uh, mouse along it to get rid of them. I'm hoping that we get a guided AI at some point, which will give you some options to where I don't want any walls when it builds this. Gotcha. And you can tell it, I don't want the walls. Yep. There. Now all the walls are gone. Okay. And then let's see, we can change the tiles. So let's go to some more natural tiles. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of like this leafy forest thing. So, you know, maybe um, there's a path that goes like this, for instance. And this is the most, you know, let's add a little bit of variety here. Mm -hmm. Like so. Because everybody, everybody goes to the, to the tavern. Sure. And let's say you, uh, I can show you that rock thing now. Let's pick some big rocks. Let's do it. So we got some rocks here. I didn't give it enough room. So I can make a big rock right there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get this big rock right here. And you see how it allows me to clip it a little bit? I do. Which <clears> is nice. Because mm -hmm. now I've got sort of a different shape. I'll make that part kind of big like that. And I love these big column columnar rocks. This thing goes right here like this. Mm -hmm. Put that like that. And then we'll put some, put another big rock over here. I'll give it some room. Whoops, that's not what I want. And I kind of like that face a little bit better. So we'll put that right there like that. And maybe just one more so that I'm not going to bore people because I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm looking at these column rocks. I'm thinking you can make a circle of standing stones. Oh, certainly. Yeah, with those rocks. Yep. That's, that's cool. That's cool. There's that. And then we'll do that same thing. We'll put another one right next to it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make sense to have the windows there now because these are blocked. But Sure. And then even you can even have... Oh, something I did want to show you. Okay. If you hold the shift key down, mm -hmm. you can just keep ah, placing stuff. Okay. And that's handy. And then actually, you know, you can turn them too. So now, because everything's in the same orientation so maybe you don't want that so there's sort of a rocky path here okay right and now i want some trees and let's put a big a nice pine tree right here and let's put in a maple now look at this see how i can kind of yeah i'm seeing it, them. Yeah. i can clip it right in there ah it doesn't look like there's some lichen growing there can you zoom in real quick so i can see that yeah yeah. That is really cool. So it looks like some, some growth. Yeah, it just looks like moss or lichen or something that's growing on this rock here. And I'll maybe, whoops. So you could put like three or four trees in there. Yeah. Yeah, here's another one. Mm -hmm. I'll just clip it right into it. Oh, now see, that's now it doesn't want me to do that. Yep. Uh, right there, but it does allow me to do that. So th you have to experiment. There's just no, 
Sure. Sometimes there's just no way you can do it without experimenting. Now, see, that looks really cool because now it looks like it's, it, from this angle, it looks like it's kind of growing on those two rocks there. So that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. See, and I just like how this looks, right? Yeah. And you can do some other trees, like maybe this one, we'll make this one big mm -hmm. and we'll turn it a little. Now that's sort of, you know, over the path there. Yep. And then if you want to put in some, you know, some other plants, although that's sort of an aloe vera type thing. So I don't know if we want it. In, these are neat. Yeah. Put one of these out. And we can grow these pretty large too. Okay. If you want to make it bigger. Sure. I kind of like that. And, uh. Gosh, there's so many assets in here that, you know, yeah. you get to play with. You know, I want some flowers. Yeah. That looks really cool. I mean, and how long did this take me? Um, I think if, if you didn't have to stop and kind of explain what you're doing here, I would say this probably would take you maybe not even 10 minutes. Not even 10 minutes, right? Yeah. And the trees can get huge. I mean, they let you yeah. make them pretty large. Yeah. That but is... they just, it just adds so much. I'll put a lemon tree here. Yep. Just for grins. Now, you were talking earlier about how um, those windows wouldn't need to be needed there with those rocks. So um, can you delete windows one by one? Because you showed how you could earlier. Your, oh, sure. Your They're kit. just assets. Okay. So what you do is, yeah, I mean, this. Okay. You just highlight them and almost every asset is going to have a. Okay. A button to get rid of the windows. So there, that makes a little more sense. And I think I want this up a little bit closer. So here's another question I have for you. What if I'm yeah, yeah. just a user who, you know, wants to go on a power trip and I don't want the AI to do everything for me. So if we go over to the brewery, let's, let's go over there if we could real quick. Yeah. If we go over to the brewery and if we could reset that room without yeah. the AI... Because I, I kind of want to... Go wanna, up here. Yeah. Go to this. Make sure you got the right room selected this time. Hilarious. Okay. Yeah. yeah hold on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well done. All right. So the AI is off. Yep. And now I'm just going to reset it. Okay. Or refresh it. Yep. So now if I wanted to put everything in there myself, where would I go in these menus to find all the items I need to make that look like a brewery? Okay. You go to place objects. Mm-hmm. And then you would probably go down here. See where this says utility? Yep. Go to utility. And now here are all the brewer's tools. They have a category for brewer's tools? Yes. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Okay. So now I could put, I could put some casks in here. Mm -hmm. And I could make them bigger and smaller. So here's maybe this is for the finer spirits, right? Yep. And then I could, you know, this might be for just your regular ale. Yep. I might set that over here. Okay. Um, this is fun. You got a furnace. And in fact, I think what I want to do in this case is go to it. Whoops. I want to go. Well, I guess that's fine. Okay. I think I want to turn it like that, though. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Because see the reflection of the. Yeah. <laughs> I see the furnace light in there. Yeah. But you can mix and match. Like, I don't have to stick with this. Let's say I didn't want that. Okay. Let's say this is really weird and I want to put, you know, a grave in the middle. You're not limited by. By just categories. and what Yeah, you don't have to there. put stuff where you'd think you'd have to put it. Right. Right. So maybe what they tried to do was hide something. They said, hey, nobody will know. Nobody would think to look for the body in the brewery. <laughs> <laughs> so they're in the middle of... Uh... So they, they dug the tiles out. Yeah, they, they dug, dug the tiles <laughs> out. <laughs> and dug into the ground. Yeah. That, that's awesome. That's the great. The local constabulary would never think that we would do that. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. So you can you can have your scenario where, you know, hey, wait a second. Yeah. Looks or, like you have a grave in your brewery. What you doing? <laughs> so I'm also looking, you have sarcophagi down there. And is there an open sarcophagi at all? Let's see here. Yeah, we've got them partially opened. Okay. So what if this is just a weird brewery and they're just brewing, instead of using brewing bats, you know, they're like, hey, our, our ale is brewed in, 
you know, authentic royal sarcophagi. <laughs> yeah, that's – there you go. Yeah. You could do that and we could even – it's nice because you can put stuff in things. So like there. That is cool. How long has he been down there? They're doing bone broth. There you go. Bone broth. We brew our ale with bones. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's awesome. That is – that's fantastic. And actually, let me check – test something. Okay. There. Oh, okay. So you – know, so witches actually own this brewery. Yeah. And it's great because you can see this creepy green mist smoke yeah. coming up. So you can tell now not everything is as it seems. That is that is fantastic. That's crazy. And that's actually helpful too. So yeah, there's a cauldron. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe I want a bench. And now we've got this. Uh, hey, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. You know. But then let's... But let's change that door because people can see through that door. Oh my gosh, what's the matter with me? Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So, we so can... actually, yeah. Oh, you know what? This is great. Hold on. Okay. Uh, oh, that's where I wanted to put it, right here. Yep. They gave us a secret door. Oh. So it looks like a, that looks like a bookshelf. Right. But if I go up close to it, and open it, it opens. So oh, can... that is so sweet. That is so cool. So uh, let's talk a little bit about these objects they're putting in here because you said that they gave us a door. So uh, I'm taken by that wording that the developers really listen to the users of the program and they're they're answering some requests for oh, items. Oh, it's, yes, it's fantastic. I mean, um, I think it could be actually I know this for for a fact that a lot of the suggestions they didn't have the have it in mind at first to put it in here necessarily right and then mm. people said we got to have a secret door you know give us a secret door and they gave us a secret door that is great that <laughs> a is lot awesome. of different things were not necessarily you know planned until the suggestions came from all the users and they said, oh, man, it would be great if we had this. Oh, is it possible to do this? And they've been great about adding assets uh, fairly often. That is really so. cool. This is this is an amazing program. I'm just looking at everything here. OK, um, anything else you want to show me before I, I throw another request at you? Because I had another idea for something. But no, go ahead and go ahead and uh, fire away. I like I sort of like the the free flow of this. So. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is, is I really want to see how quickly you could make a usable, like single room map. So if I wanted a single room, like castle, let's say a castle bedroom for a lord or a king or something like that. So how big would a bedroom be? Maybe about like that. Sure. Sounds good. Castle. Bedroom. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there. There we go. So you've got some columns. You've got the main bed there. You've got your coat of arms. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want the columns myself, so. Okay. I'm going to blow the, I'm going to get rid of these. I don't want them. Okay. And I could refresh it, but I actually like everything else. So I'm just going to yeah. pull these out. It didn't take very long. Okay. And there you go. Can you zoom and maybe, in? Can you zoom maybe in? I want, yeah, maybe I want a desk. Okay. Yeah. And so now we're going to put a desk in here. Okay. Ah, I see what you're doing. Okay. See, that's a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. Can you zoom in real quick? So yeah. Can... I just want to see some uh, some more detail on here. Because you're right, you got the shields with the coat of arms. Um, you got a bear skin. Um, yeah. Put your desk in. Yeah, I don't want the window there because I want the desk there. So that looks okay. a little better, I think. Yeah, I think the only thing that I would add here would be a fireplace right in between those two statues and a fireplace. Sure, that's a great idea. So let's get rid of that. Yep. <clears throat> and here I said I was going to be quiet. There, fireplace. Oh, my gosh. That's great. And then we can add this, you know, mm -hmm. right? Why don't we get a rug while we're at it? Yep. Yep. 
and we can even make it look cozier because we could do this and go to the chairs mm -hmm. and you have a nice chair here for reading. I like it. Maybe you have a guest. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you want to have a little table. Okay. I mean, I would stay in this room. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if I didn't like that flooring, could I change the flooring? Yeah. Okay. You go here to the flooring or to the tiles. Mm -hmm. Oops. And if I want different floors, like we could go with some nice black marble if you like. Okay. Done. Wow. See, I like that better. Okay. Are those mugs on the floor? By the bed? Is those, are the, oh, by the bed. Yeah, it looks like they looks like there's some mugs. I don't want them there. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Got to go back to the object. Mugs really should be here. Yeah. There. All right. I just had this image of like a king and queen sleeping here and going, good night, dear, and setting their mugs on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is this is fantastic. This is I'm just blown away by the versatility of this program. And I have to say, when you first pulled it up and I was looking at it, even from the time that I was looking at it, I, I'm just I'm blown away by how much this looks like a, a a video game. Yes, and a lot of people, you know, that's why they're they're saying, you know, gosh, let's get that first person view so that I can open up this. You know, I want to open this door yep. and I want to, I really want to get people to be able to walk through. Yep. Uh, I think they gave us, yeah, they did give us the WASD. Mm -hmm. So you can actually use those keys. It's a little bit easier sometimes. Okay. You can rotate with E and Q. This yeah, is that's great. pretty fantastic. This is great. This is awesome stuff. So... Well, I think we've covered just about everything. I know that, okay. um, you know, what I'd love to do, Dag, if you're open to it, is to have you back for another episode um, down sure. the line. Because I know that they implemented terrain. And, they did. Yeah. And from they what I've seen. They implemented terrain, and that's a, that's a really fabulous, fun aspect of this. You can carve rivers. Um Remember the uh, the tavern that we did, how I did the pathway? Mm -hmm. That's great for like straight 90 degree roads and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, but with the terrain tools, they give you brushes and you can make a nice curved path with that if you want. Ah, okay. And so that'll add, just adds to the versatility. That's great. It's, it's really incredible. There is one thing I do want to show you. One last thing, which probably sure. I should have covered it first, but we'll do it now. That's okay. If we go to a new map, you'll notice that there's print mm -hmm. and digital. Now, I always play on a VTT, so I just do digital. With digital, technically, there is no limit to how big the map can be. It is just limited by your hardware. Okay. But for print, if you actually want to print something, um, you can limit your size to the type of paper you want to print on. Okay. And they give you a whole bunch of options here. So American letter, that's going to be eight and a half by 11. So I'll switch the scale to inches. Mm -hmm. There's eight and a half by 11 right there. Okay. <clears throat> now your map's limited to eight and a half by 11. Okay. But you know that that's the spot you have to work with. Right. You okay. know that your map can't be any larger than this. Gotcha. Okay. Because that's just on a single sheet of eight and a half by 11. This paper. is just a single sheet, but you know... When you print it, it's going to be on your eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Now, do you know if the scale they're using for assets and things in here, that the default, are those set to the standard for like D&D &D 5e where each, each square is five feet? Do you have any idea? Each square is five feet for all intents and purposes. There is okay. a, there is a, on the discord, there's a frequently asked questions and um, you can go there and they actually give you the logic for how they scale things because if you look, sometimes the bed looks like it might end up being 10 feet across, which is just unreasonable. Right. But you also need an asset to look proper. And if you make it the right size, sometimes you can't see things. So anyway, they, they gave their logic okay. for how they did it. But for all intents and purposes, it's five feet per tile or per gotcha. square. So this is, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is nine. Nine you know, by six. Is that right? Yeah, nine by six. Okay. We got you. 
So that would be a 45 by yes. 30 foot. Yes, 45 by 30, you know, if you make it all one room. Yep. Um, okay. But of course, you can call it anything you want. If I, if I do this, and if I make it a village, <clears throat> and I make it a park, Now, park's going to be bigger than that, right? Yep. So I'm just going to change my scale. And I'm going to tell people, you know, each each is 10 feet. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes perfect sense. And then, you know, if you're familiar with, you know, um, programs like, um, you know, Photoshop or something like that, if you know how to put your own... Um, so that's, that brings up a good point. If you print this or export it to a picture, do you have to have the grid? No. Okay. Um, there's a couple places you can change it. So. Okay. You could go to settings here and you can just turn the grid off. Okay. And now the, I'm going to get off of this right now. Okay. But I've just turned, Hey, how come I can still see it? Oh, I, I didn't save it. You didn't save it. You have to save it. If you don't save it, it doesn't do it. So yep. hold on, let me go back in there. Okay. Settings off, save the changes. Okay. Now the grid's off. So, what, yeah, so, okay, cool, because what I was getting at, you know, if you're familiar with how to use Photoshop to do a grid overlay, you could just make the scale whatever you want it to be. So even though, you know, Dungeon Alchemist Square is maybe a certain size, you could put your grid in there whatever you wanted it to be. Yes, you could. Yeah. And you could even put hexes in if you want. Yeah, that's true. Okay. If, you're, if you're not afraid of any of a little bit of post-processing stuff, you could certainly put yeah. a hex overlay if you wanted to. The other place to do it is when you're exporting. If I want to export, mm -hmm. you could turn the grid off in the export. Okay, gotcha. And you so. can you can also change the um, you can change the color of the grid too. Okay, awesome. So if I go back to the settings here, mm -hmm. and change this, I'm going to turn this back on, and I want these to be oh, green is done. Let's make it red. Okay. And then I'll really make it stand out. Gotcha. See, now you've got. Okay. So that way you can make sure your grid is, is seen. Yeah, so that it's visible yeah. because sometimes you can't see it. Yep. So if you want to export it that way, you can. Yeah. When I usually I, turn it off for screenshots. Yeah. And for me, what I do um, for a lot of, of using other map making programs, um, I will have the grid turned off because I can put my own grid in Fantasy Grounds. And the reason I prefer to do that is because that's how um, the um, I can have the tokens, my players' tokens, snap to the grid in yes. fantasy ground. So I prefer to do that. I do the exact same thing. I turn it off and I use the grid for my VTT, and then I don't have to try to line stuff up. Yep. Yep. Just Absolutely. turn it off and use the existing one. If my players, you know, if they look tiny compared to that statue, maybe I don't want that. So then I would change the I would I would mess with some settings within the VTT to make it so that it scales properly yep that's i've had to do the exact same thing so yeah yeah makes perfect sense okay um well this has been great um i've really enjoyed this look at dungeon alchemist this is by far hands down the best map making program that i've seen and it sounds like from what you've said that the developers are listening to the users and their customers and they are adding stuff in based on you know, on feedback. If somebody wanted to um, download this program, where would they go to get it? Oh, you go to Steam. Okay. Just go to Steam, type in Dungeon Alchemist, and you can download it from there. Awesome. And you don't have to own it in order to join the Discord. So if you want to just search for Dungeon Alchemist Discord, and you can get on the Discord and ask as many questions as you like. Everybody's really helpful. Um, we've got a lot of mods from all over the world. So chances are, no matter where you are, you don't have to worry about time zone issues because somebody will probably be online and can help you. Okay, fantastic. And I know you're a mod on there as well. So. Yes, I'm a mod. I'm a mod on on that Discord. Okay, this is great. Well, Dag, before we sign off, do you have any shout outs that you want to do to anybody? Well, sure. All all my colleagues, all my uh, fellow mods. Uh, thanks everybody for making this such a wonderful experience. I really enjoy heading out there and seeing what people have to say. And uh, certainly the devs, of course, everybody at Briganti, because they've, the assets that they're turning out and the, the different 
uh, changes that it's gone through since it first started development was absolutely incredible. It's been a, it's been an absolute joy. This is great. All right. Well, Dak, thank you very much for taking us through this um, um, overview of Dungeon Alchemist. I'm hoping that um, for viewers seeing this, that they're going to go out and download this program after seeing how easy it is to use and how quickly you can have a playable map up. And again, I hope that uh, you'll come back for a, uh, an episode in the future. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for joining me today. And I sure. hope you have a great evening. Thanks so much. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Wow. Thanks to Dag Nabbit for joining me for this in-depth look at Dungeon Alchemist. If you are as blown away as I am by the power, the ease of use, and the versatility of this program, head on over to Steam. Go ahead and download Dungeon Alchemist. Start making your own maps. Also, don't forget to join the Dungeon Alchemist Discord community. I'm a part of that Discord, and I can tell you from personal experience that you will get all the help you need in your initial maps. You'll have all of your questions answered. Very friendly people on this Discord community. If you did like the content in this series, I would be immensely grateful if you would leave a comment and if you would also like and subscribe, so that way you'll get notified when a new video is released. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time on the Digital Mapmakers Academy.